Hello, this is Beth Holtzman with UVM Extension's New Farmer Project. We're here today with Julia Shanks to talk about bookkeeping basics for farm businesses. This session is part of a joint Vermont and New Hampshire project to help beginning and women farmers manage risks and is made possible by grant funding from the USDA Risk Management Agency. We are excited to have Julia here with us today to share her expertise on building successful and resilient farm businesses. So, on to you, Julia. Thank you, Beth, and thank you for having me. And it's so important uh, talking about risk and good bookkeeping systems because the best way to manage risk is to understand where you are so that you can make a plan going forward and do scenario planning and all of that. So thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. My name is, <laughs> my name is Julia Shanks, and I am a former chef. So while I have not farmed directly, I know what it's like to work in a high pace, high pressure environment that's abusive to our bodies, you know, working on your feet, burning yourself, cutting yourself. So it's hard work, it's food and it's nurturing. So I get that. I also wrote a book called The Farmer's Office, which helps farmers build uh, their financial knowledge so they can better manage their businesses. And I talk about uh, financial management and bookkeeping. And I am also a QuickBooks Certified Pro Advisor. In addition, I run a website called The Farmer's Office. So if you wanna take online classes with me, you can check out my website. So today we're gonna to be talking about bookkeeping basics and we're gonna do four parts today. The first part is gonna be an overview, why bother with bookkeeping and the different kinds of record keeping. In the second part, we're gonna talk about organizing your system and how to create the structure for your bookkeeping system. In part three, we're gonna do a little overview of QuickBooks, which is the most common bookkeeping software used by farmers. And then finally, we'll talk about reading your numbers. And you know, now that you've got this bookkeeping system and you've got all these numbers, what do you do? So that will be part four. So here we go. Uh, part one is an overview of record keeping. And I want to start with why bother? Because, you know, let's be honest, when you started farming, you got into farming because you love being outside and being in nature and growing food and nurturing the soil and our communities. You did not get into farming because you like bookkeeping. But if you want to be successful in farming and as a business owner, you really need to understand your numbers. So let me give you a couple of examples. So let's say, for example, you know, you go to the hardware store and you spend $20 on, you know, some equipment and, you know, you get back into your truck, you drive back to the farm and you shove that receipt in your pocket and the pants go through the laundry and that's the end of that. So as a result, when you look at your expenses for the end of the year, you actually report less than you actually had. You had $20 less of expenses. Therefore, your profits are going to show higher because you don't have that expense. And with a higher profit, you're gonna pay more in taxes and you're gonna have more cash outflow. So just at a very basic level, good record keeping is gonna make sure that you understand your profits and you don't pay any more in taxes than you don't want to, because who wants to pay taxes? Another reason, and this is actually a true story, a client I was working with, we were working to clean up his QuickBooks and we realized that he had accidentally double counted his revenue. So he was downloading his uh, revenue from Square, which is an online POS system, and he was downloading his uh, revenue from QuickBooks, and he ended up double counting his revenue because he didn't properly sync up the QuickBooks with the Square. And as a result, he overstated his income by $3,000. And as we saw from the first example, when you overstate your income, you pay more taxes than you're supposed to. And this is a, a significant impact of, you know, $750 or $1,200, depending on where you are in your tax bracket. But equally important is that you don't understand your true cost of production and you don't know how you're really doing. And it looks like you're doing better than you are. And let me give you an example of how this can be affected. So as an example in this farm, let's say his actual revenue was $50,000 and his cost of production was $25,000, therefore his gross profit was $25,000. Now he had double counted part of his revenue of an extra $3,000. So the expenses are the same, but now he's showing a gross profit of $28,000 or 53%. So 
you end up making different decisions. If your gross profit is 53%, you're like, oh, wow, I'm doing great. If your gross profit is 50%, you're like, okay, I'm doing good, but you know what? I got to be careful because if it drops any lower than that, I got to watch out. So you may have a different sense of how your business is doing based on not really understanding your revenue and not really understanding your costs. And ultimately, you have questions about your business. Some of the questions that you might have, can you afford to purchase new equipment? What is your cost of production for a certain crop? Is it worth going to a farmer's market? And now especially, I know a lot of farmers are reevaluating their sales channels and does it make sense to do this sales channel or that sales channel? Can you afford to discount your prices to sell wholesale? So lots of questions that you have about your business. And you need information. You know, you can't just sort of like, oh, I'll just go to that farmer's market or, oh, I'll just price my tomatoes because that's what everybody else is doing. You need information. You, you know, you want to know what did you sell? What are your expenses? And, you know, some expenses are fixed based on production. Some expenses are variable based on production. And if you choose one opportunity over another, how are your expenses going to change? So you want to know what they are. What is your cost of production? And uh, what are the expenses associated with a specific sales channel? So you want this information, and this information comes from your record keeping system. So there are different kinds of record keeping systems. So first of all, there's the financial, and that's what we're going to talk about primarily today. And it's tracking your sales, your expenses, your cash flow in general, the investments that you make. And certainly there's production record keeping in terms of harvest yield and pick records and time and labor. And if you're farming organically, you're certainly going to need to think about those as well. But we're going to focus today on the financial record keeping. Oops, wrong way. So when we track, how we track matters. And we want to track, first of all, we want to track the date. When did we do whatever it is that we did, go to the hardware store, plant seeds, buy seeds, pay our employees, go to the farmer's market. When did we do that? What was the dollar value? How much cash flowed in this transaction? And what was it, its purpose? Did we pay for labor? Did we pay for seeds and supplies? Did we pay for market fees? And we also want to consider how we track. And the three most common are QuickBooks, which is an accounting software. Excel, which is a spreadsheet, or Ledger, which is, you know, the basic pen and paper. Now, a lot of people are going to consider using a Ledger. It's certainly a lot easier when it comes to data entry, but what you save in time in terms of data entry, you're going to lose when it comes to doing the analysis. All systems are going to take time, and, you know, something like QuickBooks is really difficult in terms of the learning curve and getting up to speed. Uh, figuring out how to do it. But once you have it working, it's really easy to run reports and see how your business is doing. So everything's going to take time. It's just where are you going to put in the time and where's the learning curve? So I want to talk about some four basic rules of bookkeeping. The first rule is garbage in, garbage out. And as farmers, you know this. The quality of your soil is going to directly impact the quality of your tomatoes. The quality of your feed is going to directly impact the quality of your eggs and your chickens. And the same is true with your bookkeeping system. The quality of your inputs is going to directly impact the quality of your outputs. And if you just sort of shove garbage into your QuickBooks or your Excel spreadsheet, you're going to get garbage out. You're not going to have any information to look at. And the inputs are the transactions, those little day-to-day -day things that happen in your business, whether it's, you know, filling up the truck with gas, going to the farmer's market, paying employees, making a sale, paying your rent, paying your utilities, all of these little transactions, these are the inputs that are going to go into your record-keeping system. And the output is your financial statements. It's a profit and loss, which is also known as the income statement, and you can use those two terms interchangeably. And the profit and loss is gonna give you an overview of your profitability and your operations. The balance sheet, which we're not gonna get into too much detail today, but is so important, is an overview of what you have, your assets, 
And how did you get them? Did you get them by borrowing money or did you get them by earning profits or investing your own in the business? And finally, we have the statement of cash flows. And the statement of cash flow shows how cash moved in and out of your business. And when we get to um, the fourth part, when we talk about reading your financial statements, we'll talk about the difference between cash flow and profits. In other words, your bookkeeping system is, a, or the financial statements are a summary of the transactions that convey information. And a good bookkeeping system is gonna help you manage the input so that you can get the output. And QuickBooks is a great tool for that. Certainly you can use Excel and a ledger as well. But as I mentioned earlier, it just takes a little bit more work to get the output from some of these other bookkeeping systems. Rule number two is you're the boss. You are in charge of this bookkeeping system. And we'll talk a little bit more about this um, in the next section, but you need to set up your system in a way that's gonna work for you. And you need to set it up with account names that make sense to you. You know, if you go with a template, you know, if you download an Excel template or you use <coughs> QuickBooks, they may suggest a setup for you because, oh, you're a farmer, therefore you should have this setup. Well, that doesn't always work for every farmer. So you need to make adjustments and adaptations to make the system work for you so that you can get the information you need. And one of the reasons why that's so important to make it work for you is that you really need to be consistent. And you need to be consistent in two ways. Number one, you need to be consistent in how you track things. So as an example, if you record your um, seed purchases as seeds, you wanna make sure that you always record them as seeds and not as farm supplies or seeds and seedlings or um, inputs or whatever. I mean, there are different ways that you can describe seeds, but you wanna make sure that however you describe it in your bookkeeping system, in your record keeping system is consistent. So you wanna be consistent in how you record things. And you wanna be consistent in how often you record things. You wanna be regularly recording your transactions because it's gonna help you make informed decisions quickly. You're gonna stay on top of it. If you save your bookkeeping and record keeping for the end of the month or the end of the year when you have time, it's gonna be a lot harder. So it's really important to be consistent. And finally, the fourth rule of bookkeeping is to focus on the managerial decisions. And you wanna be careful when you work with a bookkeeper or when you work with an accounting firm, and there's certainly no reason why you shouldn't outsource to um, a bookkeeper, but a lot of times people focus on the tax implications, like what do we need to do to file your taxes at the end of the year? And what we do for tax filings and what we do for managerial decisions, like can I afford to go to this farmer's market or buy new equipment, how we record things is different. So it's really important that when you set up your system, you focus on the managerial decisions. And certainly you can align it in a way that allows you to make managerial decisions and file your taxes, but it's important first to focus on the managerial decisions and then second to um, file your taxes. So in the next section, we're going to talk about how we track our numbers and how to set up a system so that you can get the most out of your data. I want to thank you all for joining us. If you need more information, you're always welcome to reach out to me. And certainly you can reach out to the UVM and UNH extensions team. Kelly and Beth are awesome. You can get more resources at thefarmersoffice.com and also at uvm.edu backslash new farmer. Thank you and we'll see you soon.